Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Cynthia Simmons. I'm Professor of Islamic Studies here at Boston College. And um, I have the pleasure today of introducing um, our second speaker in a three-part series on faith communities and civil society during and after conflict. The first lecture was on Syria. This lecture and the following lecture focus on southeastern Europe. Um, and they are connected. Um, the speakers are colleagues and uh, work both within their scholarly communities and their faith communities on the ground um, to address the issues of this region. And they have to do with the relationship between religion and nationhood primarily. Um, you will hear today some background um, to the region, the history of the region on this topic, the relationship of religion to nationhood. And you also uh, reference, at least our speaker will reference, uh, the 20 years that has followed the dissolution of Yugoslavia and the wars that accompanied that dissolution. However, if you uh, are specialist in or very interested in other regions of like Eastern Europe or the Middle East, what you hear today will, might sound very familiar. Um, again, the connection between historically between religion and nationhood, um, or the questions today that arise um, in what we term um, political Islam or political Christianity. Uh, so there is relevance of this of, these, of this talk and the one that follows beyond this region. And in many ways, um, there are lessons to be learned. That's a that's a phrase we've used in our profession, um, lessons learned from the Yugoslav Wars, that sort of thing. So um, it, will, you will, it may sound familiar, and you may, often, you may take away um, some thoughts and um, be directed to some readings and research based on what we hear today. Um, so a bit of uh, background to our speaker today. Um, Alan Kristich is a Christian theologian, scholar, and activist who participates in a number of initiatives, both within the academy and on the ground, as they say, that in various ways contribute to civil society. He considers the translation of theological texts into BCS, Bosnian, Croatian, Serbian, most crucial to introducing into the discussion among the faithful, religious leaders, and the general public, the reflections of the faith communities beyond Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, and Serbia and to that end became one of the founders and editors of the Croatian edition of the International Catholic Theological Journal Concilium, which describes as its mission, quote, to promote theological discussion in the spirit of Vatican II, end quote. He has edited translations of other theological texts that can counter ethno-nationalist rhetoric and prove influential even beyond religious institutions, and the academy. He has published five books, I think maybe now more. <laughs> I'm not sure, but um, he has some with him today. Uh, among them, Religion and Power and The Tyranny of the Religious, Essays on Religious Atheism. And he works on the ground in initiatives we will hear more about from our next speaker, um, Zilka Svahitshiliak, Alan Kristic's colleague from the Muslim faith community, to introduce, uh, introduce ethics education into ethnically divided public schools in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Um, a note about our format before I introduce our speaker. Uh, the lecture, of course, is in English. But uh, to aid us, if necessary, in the question and answer session that follows the lecture, and at the reception that is waiting for us outside the room here, is my colleague, Ellen Elias Vorsuch. Um, and uh, she and Alan Kristic will negotiate um, any question from you on, uh, from any discipline, um, on any topic, and in any register of English, so that we can have a full-ranging discussion um, and answer any question you might have. So now please welcome Alan Kristic, who will speak on the ruins of communism, faith communities, and post-war challenges in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia, and Serbia. Um, I'm just going to translate a first a few opening expressions of gratitude. So first I want to thank uh, Cynthia Simmons of Boston College for the invitation. 
Sretan sam da sam danas ovdje i da s vama mogu podijeliti misli o vlastitoj regiji. I'm delighted to be here today to be able to share with you some of my ideas about the region I come from. No na poseban način moram zahvaliti profesorici Simons, uh, Simons za njezin rad vezan uz moju regiju. And I, I want to really express my special thanks to Cynthia Simmons for her work related to my the part of the world that I live in. Taj rad nije samo uh, veliko znanstveno postignuće. Her work isn't only significant for its impressive scholarship. Uh, taj rad je pružio podršku mnogim ljudima i skupinama koji se bore za pozitivne društveno-političke promjene u mojoj regiji. Her work has also offered important support for people working towards a positive outcome uh, in, in the region that I'm from. And I wanted to just add that in the paper, the word nation and national and nationalities is a kind of a synonym for ethnicities. And we use the word nation differently in English, like the nation, the United States, one nation under God, or whatever. But in, in Bosnia and Croatia and Serbia, you have the Croatian nation, the Bosnian, the some, something, nation, the Serbian nation. These are, these, are, these are about ethnicities or ethnic groups or groups within the country. So they can be a little bit confusing if you don't realize that kind of double name. The revival of the ideology of religious nationalism was one of the main causes of the wars in which Yugoslavia broke apart. In the years prior, communism had been violently suppressing the centuries unresolved national question. When communism failed, the notion of the nation triumphantly returned to the scene additionally distorted by violent constraint. Neurotic nationalisms presented in political projects with exclusive goals where all parties build the same territory for their national and religious community were pitted one against the other. In the previously mixed ethnic and religious regions, the warlike politics of ethnic cleansing was the pathway to finally realize the centuries-old nationalist utopia, the national religious clean territories or states. All began with the greater Serbian mythology to which also joined, joined the greater Croatian and greater Bosnian mythology. However, the evil that erupted from this quest for ethnically clean territories would have been unthinkable or at least less brutal were it not coupled with an aggressive renaissance of the religious. This wedding was expected because the national conscience developed on the basis of conflicting religious affiliations. Religious communities have long been cradles of national consciences, memory, and culture. Religious leaders put themselves at the service of the national parties, legitimizing the usurpation of religious resources by national ideologies. They naively believed that national renewal would automatically guarantee genuine religious renewal. All of this has been shown to be especially devastating for the religious, ethnic, and cultural plurality of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The war and post-war trauma, whose longevity testifies to the survival of war policies, it is spoken of as the unfinished war in Bosnia and Herzegovina, raise the question. Why do Christianity and Islam in Southeastern Europe always already show themselves incapable of messages of peace and nonviolence against the threat of violent conflicts? And in the post-war period, why do these faiths fail in offering messages of forgiveness and reconciliation? Our religions 
still useful when the chorus of war symbolized by the cities of Bukovar, Srebrenica, and Sarajevo were possible. When 20 years after the war, these fates are still resisting honest confrontation with our own complicity for the war and post-war evil. When they still continue to allow political elites to have unhindered use of religious resources as a strong political mobilization force, leading to the closing of our own ranks and the intimidation of others. When they have no wounds to testify to their fight against the creators of wartime and post-war evil. When they are still dreaming of the national ghettos where they will be sacralized as the tutors of the socio-politica. When war criminals are promoted into national heroes and role models of religious life. What needs to happen so that religions in southeastern Europe finally become bearers of the divine word of reconciliation in which hides the possibility for positive social processes? In order to answer these questions, we need to look back to the past of southeastern Europe. The secular life on the borders of conflicted civilizations, empires, and ideologies long shaped religious identities in southeastern Europe at the meeting point of the East and the West. The enemy threat, permanent and direct, caused a strong ideologization of religions, a fatal primacy of the political over the religious. In the case of Catholicism, it was a conflict with Islam, Orthodoxy, and Communism. Therefore, Christianity and Islam in Southeastern Europe are mainly lived as a central marker of an ethnic group, which is taken on the basis of biological automatism and not as a personal choice impersonally and collectivistic. <coughs> a warlike atmosphere doesn't allow the essence of the religious to take root, the comments of dialogue, nonviolence, forgiveness, and reconciliation. The measure of the religious is its warrior spirit, <coughs> formed in the bosom of the religious National identities are based on the same warrior spirit. Never fully secular, secularized, they provide credibility and sustainability by the usurpation of religious resources. Thus, there is a root of religious nationalism, a sinister pathology in the societies of southeastern Europe. Nationalized faith is a regional form of the alliance of the throne and altar in three conflicting varieties, political Catholicism, political orthodoxy, and political Islam. <coughs> its aim is a conformist education of believers, more precisely citizens. For a blindly obedient believer, will also be a blindly obedient supporter of a nation or party, and vice versa. A consequence of this is the destruction of religious capital for social transformation. Nationalized faith destroys religion from within. The sacralized nation takes God's place. The hubris of the nation followed by hatred of others, obliterates the memory of the equality of all people before God and the obligation of a particular philanthropy toward the other. National interests become the new decalogue as if God's judgment concerns nationality and not humanity. 
A centuries old delay of modernism has granted privileges to that regional development. Since there was no political freedom of nations and political parties, and those are the essential elements of modernism, fighters for national liberation in southeastern Europe were religions that are still considered to be keepers of the national identity. It is tragic that even today they don't know to distance themselves creatively from that task. Frequent socio-political upheavals prevented the development of the national in the direction of priority of the personal over the collective, political maturity, and the strong civil society, which has been present in Western Europe for hundreds of years. In contrast, the historical heritage of Southeastern Europe in all its aspects is opposed to democracy. Politically authoritarian, culturally traditionalist, socially undeveloped and collectivistic conservative. An identity metaphor that depicts the realities of Southeastern Europe is a military fortress that is rooted in identity building via demonizing the other. Until now, religions existing on pre-modernist vision of Christianity or Islam significantly contribute to all of that. The last war <coughs> destroyed the first buds of modernism, a renewed period of pre-modernism associated with a fatal focus on the past struck political and religious protagonists. They steal from modernism a focus on rights, but read it of the ability to embody a rights-based approach that can support pluralism or difference. And this should not be so. The fall of communism and the newly obtained freedom and penetration of modernism presented a unique opportunity for a radical behavioral and philosophical reformation of the varied religions. Moving from service to the secular religion of nationalism to a re return to their original religious mission. If they had abstained from the sacralization of certain political parties, and getting lost in daily political issues, they would have contributed to the development of a new political culture. It was the moment that they could finally have become the uncompromising guardians of humanity, a commitment without which both the religious and the nation state become deformed. However, this did not happen. The New York, New, New York desire for a privileged socio-political status encouraged by pre-modernist dreams propelled religions to pursue an <coughs> ideologized mode of behavior and thereby their reduction to a mere means of nationalist sacral mobilization. Instead of God, they sought their existential security in an alliance with the political figures of a nationalist stand. Absolutization of institutional freedom abolished the freedom to proclaim the word of God. Political calculation elimin eliminated the ethical concreteness of divine revelation which demands practical solidarity with the victims of unjust socio-political relations. The Constantinian syndrome became a reality once again. Secular power abolished the ability to listen and all service and dialogue between religions. 
relying on the method of socio-political privileges or punishment, religions operated via the forced collectivistic religious renewal. A prerequisite for that was exactly the marrying of secular and religious powers established in a climate of national religious renaissance. Thus, on the eve of the war, religions found themselves in the hands of nationalist fanatics, and the root of their complicity in the war is closely linked to their desire for worldly power. It is tragic that almost nothing has changed even after the horrors of war. The socio-political desirability to publicly be a believer inflamed the wires of religious hypocrisy. Testifying convincingly to this religious hypocrisy, a religious atheist even more dangerous than communism is the lack of a high degree of external manifestations of the religious as well as the disasters of socio-political situation in the societies of Southeast Eastern Europe. This is the falsity of religion hidden by fundamentalist narrow, narrow Mindedness and ostentatious tri triumphalism. It satisfies the affiliation without faith. There are many phenomena that witness to the forced collectivistic religious renewal, a kind of religious tyranny which corresponds to the definitive establishment of ethnically pure or ethnically ghettoized societies the misuse of religious symbols. From a function of dividing people one from the other to a demonstration of domination over others to the intimidation of others. The abuse of catechism in schools, a reduction to a nationalistic religious training stick which encourages the phenomenon of two schools under one roof the segregation of students along an ethnic matrix, the absolute control of religious and often secular media. Criticism from the outside is discredited as a phobia and from within as the demolition of unity. The wasteful construction of religious building, despite the growing social misery whose architecture testifies not only to social cynicism, but also to the warrior, warrior authoritarian spirit of religions. The public performances of religious leaders who often resort to fundamentalist statements that depend social divisions about the impossibility of a moral life for the non-religious, those of a different sexual orientation, etc. Without a trace of self-criticism concerning the responsibility of religions for the state of society. The abuse of the local religious communities as powerful means for political agitation, especially before elections. It is indicative that political converts occupy an important role in the re realization of the forced collectivistic religious renewal. <coughs> Former guards of communist orthodoxy overnight turned into privileged guards of religious orthodoxy and did so the only way known to them via implementation of an inquisitorial police force. The methods of silencing the few critical voice within religions have been perfected. These guards have not even shrunk from dismissing newspaper editors 
or from prohibiting lectures by so-called dissident university professors or from the persecution of priests, forcing them out of the country. Any criticism has been discredited as an attack on the religions themselves and also indirectly as an attack on the existence of the nation. It is hard to imagine what could deter religions from such behavior when neither war nor post-war atrocities should break such behavior. Nevertheless, there is no doubt as to the first step on the road to conversion, road of to conversion. The basic prerequisite for the behavioral change of religions of Southeastern Europe, but it is also the central post war challenge, is a public admission of their complicity in the last war and the evils arise, arising from it. Without a merciless truth about themselves, they cannot reclaim their lost credibility. However, the beginnings of the confrontation of religions with their complicity in the last war have not come to pass even 20 years after the war. The theology and spirituality <coughs> they propagated was demonically distorted. Thus, a central question is, how could it be that believers became capable of a night of committing atrocities against their former neighbors. How is it possible that the prayers in mosques and churches were practiced without any remorse, although people we had known were constantly disappearing in dead camps before our Lord's eyes, only because those who disappeared were of different religion and nation. When will religions in Southeastern Europe embrace the subversive thought of Dietrich Bonhoeffer that the free admission of guilt by the church means regaining the character of Jesus Christ, the return of the divine spirit into religious communities? When will they embrace von Hefer's warning that the one who stifles free admission of guilt in the church is hopelessly guilty before Christ. The free admission of guilt and dealing with the consequences of their actions would mean for today's religious practice a catharsis of religions and their contribution to the positive processes in the societies of the region. But what could lead religions to the admission of guilt and the shift in behavior when the horrors of war have not done that? It is, of course, God's grace, and religions would meet it when they would accept a, persp a perspective from below as a relevant for their behavior, when they would develop their own structures and activities from the perspective of the powerless, the oppressed, and the despised, when they would start approaching society not from on high and all wise, but with an attitude of listening and solidarity. What would that mean in practice, in a regional context, I will try to explain this taking the Catholic Church as my example. To be able to respond to post-war challenges, the Catholic Church would have to distance itself from their Constantinian nationalist system, a seductive dream of the pre-modern church as an institution that masterfully handles the socio-political realm from Olympus as the political forces of the right-wing nationalist parties are promising to reinstate. Practic practically, 
that would mean a break from the corrupting fixation on the state of Croatia and on the Croatian Catholic political elite in Bosnia and Herzegovina. The church should stop being understood as a guarantor of national existence and turn to solidarity, listening, and humble service to all people who suffer because of war and post-war socio-political devastations. The church faces the challenge of chaotic turning point from Constantinian nationalist utopias towards war and post-war heterotopias. In the vein of Michel Foucault, under heterotopias, I think about the places in society where suppressed truth about society is revealed and where people fight for trumped human dignity. The prerequisite for this is the adoption of the doctrines of the Second Vatican Council. The Church, only on the basis of transnational and trans-religious solidarity with the oppressed people can experience what it means to be a Christian in our region today. The divine spirit is not waiting in the courts of political figures, but in disturbing heterotopias in which people struggle for human dignity, which the inhuman cynicism of political religious elites is responsible for creating. That is the only way the church can finally break away from the authoritarian and violent prescription of its own monologue and non-historical vision of Christianity and unquestionable interpretation of the Christian in politics, ethics, and economics. Christianity just like the church, is not something static and unchanging, but is constantly happening <coughs> in places of solidarity and mutual interpenetration of the church and the world. Emerging from itself, the church doesn't lose itself as some fear, but it finally finds itself. I will give a few positive and few negative heterotopias or signs of the times, which are key to the new structure of the church, its new theological discourse, and its new pastoral practice, because they represent not only the destruction of its religious national triumphalism, but also the places of discovery of the specific content of the Christian in our context. Places of war crime, crimes and faces of traumatized war victims. Places of national religious divisions and the manifestation of violence through religious <coughs> architecture and symbols. Places of growing social injustice, destruction of nature and domestic violence. Places of artists creativity because artists are leading in the creation of transnational and transreligious solidarity and memory, which is a prerequisite of overcoming the logic of the national religious ghettos and restoration of regional societies. Places where non-governmental organizations are fighting against the social political deviations. <coughs> the church must find again a new structure, a new theological discourse, and a new pastoral practice in these heterotopic places where vulnerable people are struggling for human dignity and from whom we too often turn our heads away. The church must learn from the victims of war and post-war traumas about its true mission in Southeastern Europe. If it 
if it doesn't want to be a factor in the creation of war horrors again. That is the only way in which the church can recover from the Constantinian nationalist neurosis that, make it, that makes it unreliable, Christian, and socially dangerous. Only power gained from the sufferers can make it authentic and on the proper road to being socially relevant. The power mediated by political figures corrupts it within and makes it guilty of the sin of idolatry, the worship of a secularized nation. Before the victims of war and post-war traumas, it should get over the role of the guard of the national in favor of the role of the uncompromising guard of the human. And that is the only way to preserve the national as a cultural horizon in which every religion manifests itself. And all of this, a shift away from the nationalist utopias to the world post for heterotopias is a challenge faced by both the Serbian Orthodox Church and the Islamic community. The Serbian Orthodox Church should begin systematizing itself starting from the horrors of Srebrenica and Vukovar as a thorn in its flesh. The Catholic Church starting from the horrors of Ahmici and Stupni Do. The Islamic community from the horrors of Uzdol and Kazan. In the end, I want to point out several specific challenges that are the backbone of the shift from the nationalist utopia towards world post for heterotopias, without which the religions in southeastern Europe continue to be religiously unreliable and socially dangerous. Education for an affiliation with a free critical distance. By democratizing their own inner life, starting with the withdrawal of the monocratic undertaking of authority, religions would no longer be a space in which believers are educated for immature belonging, associated with drowning in the community and the loss of personal responsibility, which essentially paved the way for nationalist politics and mass war crimes. Education for a new culture of memory. As reservoirs of national memory, religions must, must start the process of the purification of memory, teaching believers that the admission of guilt for the evil committed to others and praying for forgiveness for that is a reflex of believers and human maturity because by doing that, they would put an end to selective memory based on the needs of their own innocence, which in the hands of political elites transforms into a powerful means of encouraging new hatred and revenge. Education for peace and nonviolence. Putting an end to the sacralization of violence with religious resources, religions must rediscover their own peacemaking potential and make it the backbone of religious identity so as to be the peace factor in the region through leaders and believers. Education for dialogue. Abandon, abandoning the dream of totalitarian and unitary society, religions should, by allowing the plurality in their own structures, educate believers for a life in a pluralistic society, 
with reference to dialogue with people of different religious and worldview orientation based on ethical kinship, which is reflected in values such as humanity and reciprocity. Education for social justice. <coughs> By breaking with morality pathologically reduce reduced to sexuality and corruptibility by the political elites, religion must gather courage for a prophetic protest against the creators of social injustice, not only because it is a basic condition for their credibility, but also because people abandoned to social misery are easy prey for nationalistic political manipulation. Education for gender equality. By breaking with the religious legitimacy of patriarchy's theological constructs motivated by distrust and hatred towards women, religion should, by the practice of gender equality in their own <coughs> structures, strengthen efforts around inclusion of women into social political structures, on the transformation of which <coughs> depends the future of the society of Southeastern Europe, and, and which is impossible without the contribution of women. Education for the common good. By breaking with the obsession with the state, religions should turn to the civil society as a space of voluntaries in which believers fighting for the common good with all people can reveal repressed aspects of religious identity, such as environmental awareness, and concretely contribute to the positive transformation of society. In fact, by practicing the above mentioned religions would in Southeastern Europe contribute to the long term and personal transformation of mentality and the building up of democratic political culture without which all structural and institutional reforms, no matter how necessary, will be insufficient. It is significant that many believers through various non-governmental organization are already doing that without waiting passively for a shift in the official structures of faith communities. Thank you. Um, you spoke a lot about trying to improve education about all these things, uh, to try to move away from a nationalistic religiosity that corrupts the religion itself. Is this something you'd see done in the religion itself, like on a weekly basis, or would that be more like something done in the schools from a young age? Like, so do, would you want to break it from the state, or have it be incorporated in the religion itself? So the educational processes are going on at all sorts of different levels. Mm -hmm. Right after the war, this war. The pioneers who were sort of breaking through new pathways to find ways to do this. Uh, bili su često vjernici u nevladinim organizacijama. Were often the faithful working in non-government organizations. I tu su surađivali s ljudima koji nisu vjernici. And they worked there with people who were in fact religious at all. Na početku za takve projekte nije bilo mjesta u vjerskim zajednicama. There was no place in the religious communities for people like them thinking of that. Okay. Sada nakon 20 godina, 20 years later, Ono što su nekad radili pioniri i bili optuživani, 
the, what, what the pioneers used to be doing, for which they were accused and blamed in public. Now the religious communities have taken up those things and are incorporating them. And quite a lot of that is getting into the educational system. But the more challenging and provocative things are still being done by individuals in the NGO. Ali sigurno za deseta godina to će raditi svi drugi. I zato su vrlo važni oni koji će se usuditi nešto raditi prvi. How long have the schools been segregated based on religion for? Has that been for a long time? Koliko su dugo dvije škole pod jednim krovom to traje? Dakle, to nije opći slučaj u Bosni i Hercegovini. It's not all schools that are divided that way. Ali je to slučaj u mjestima gdje su nacionalne napetosti još uvijek jako velike. It's in towns where there's a great deal of ethnic tension still around after the war that mixed communities where these things are very fraught. I to traje od rata do danas. And it's been going on since the war. Oh, wow. 20 years we've had interfaith dialogue. Ono što je po meni problem je sljedeći. This the following is what is a problem in this for me. To je načela općenit dialog. It's a generalized principle discussion on principle. Ne reflektira se na društvo. It doesn't find a reflection in the actual society. Navešu jedan primjer. Here's an example. Socijalna nepravda iznimno rastu u našem društvu. Social injustice is growing exceptionally fast in our internal society. Radnička prava rapidno se gube. Workers rights are fate are disappearing very fast. U središtu kršćanstva i islama nalazi se zahtjev za socijalnu pravu. At the heart of Christianity and Islam is a demand for social justice. Međutim naše zajednice nemaju snage zajedno nastupiti zahtjevajući socijalnu pravu. But our communities don't have the strength and the stamina to stand together and demand social justice. Nemaju snage uprijeti prste prstom u one koji stvaraju sirotinu. They don't have this strength to point fingers at the people who are creating the impoverishment that we're seeing. Ne mogu shvatiti da nije dovoljno da prave samo javne kuhinje, a da ne pitaju odakle dolaze ti ljudi, tko im otima kruh. They, it, it, it's hard to explain to them that it's not enough just to make public kitchens <coughs> where people can come and eat, but you have to wonder why so many people are needing publications. And they have to face the question, <coughs> is their silence being bought by the people who are creating the unjust situations in the society? Dakle, puno je područja dijaloga, ali bi on morao biti konkretan i u korist ljudi. So there's plenty of areas where dialogue is going on, but it should be concretized, it should be made more concrete and specific to the actual situations that are going on in society. Yes? Are there any organizations from Christian communities that are outside of these countries that have tried to help with this problem? And if so, have they helped or hurt? You may organizacije koje su od izvan ovih društava, od ovog društva, koji su sudjeluju u razgovorima oko ovog problema i jesu li pomogli ili odmogli u tome. 
ima puno organizacija i puno je djelovalo kroz protekli 20 godina nakon rata. There's many organizations that have been active in the last 20 years since the war. Uh, ono što bih naveo kao jedan od problema, one of the problems that I would give you, uh, ljudi koji se bore unutar naše društva za pozitivne promjene, uh, ne mogu se nadati pomoći ni od jednog domaćeg aktivira. People who are working and fighting for positive changes in our society can't have, expect any support from domestic sources. Ni crkve, ni društva, ni vlade. Not the church, not the society, not the government. Dakle, isključivo su upućeni na pomoć izvana, većih organizacija ili donatora. So the only help that they can hope for is from organizations from outside the country. Donors, donors. Problem je što je ta pomoć uvijek neizvjesna. But the problem is that that support is a little bit uncertain. It's hard to rely on. A promjene koje su potrebne društvu su dubinske. One za njih treba 10, 15, 20 godina. And the kinds of changes that we need in society are profound or deep seated changes that need to happen and for changes like that you need 10 or 15 years of continuous work. I često nemamo te resurse za taj dugoročni rad. And often we don't we can't we don't have the kinds of resources you need for that kind of long term work. I nažalost resursa je sve manje zbog mnogih drugih kriza. And the resources are getting thinner and thinner because of crisis in other parts of the world where the resources are being drawn off to those other areas. Yes, um, and then over here. So, so you mentioned national memory at the end there. How has this memory been commemorated in places such as like Srebrenica or other like war zones? Is there any monuments that have constructed or anything like that? I was talking about cleansing memory, oh. getting rid of memory of things. Sada svatko pamti samo vlastite žrtve. So now each of the communities remembers only its own sacrifices and victims. Često se te žrtve preuveličavaju. And often these victims and sacrifices are over exaggerated. Ponekad se uživa u tome da se bude žrtva. And then people get sort of excited about being victims. A problem je što mi iz vlastitog pančenja uh, sakrivamo pod tepih izrezujemo ono zlo koje smo učinili drugima. And often we stuff under the rug or slice out of our memories the evil that we did to other groups. Uh, ja često znam reći uh, naša zemlja će imati budućnost kad počnemo graditi spomenike za žrtve koje su pale od ruke naših sunarodnjaka. So you had spoken about the kind of inherent patriarchy and kind of hierarchy in these systems, and then also about the lack of the presence of women in the hierarchy of these systems. And so I'm kind of wondering whether or not you see a connection there somehow in their inability to recognize how unhelpful they're being in these situations, the fact that they're inflaming a lot of these problems, and what's being done as far as gender par parity. Spominali ste patriarhalni odnos i hierarhijski odnos u ovim situacijama i onda ste spominjali da nema puno žena u tim procesima, pa da li je to povezano i što je, što se dešava sa ženama, mislim, sa onom što ste spominjali pred ovim odnosom. Uloga žena je vrlo zanimljiva u našem društvu. The role of women is very interesting in our society. Ja sam... Uh, jako sam se puno bavio mirotvorstvom. I've worked a great deal on peacemaking. Uh, globalno i regionalno. Both globally and regionally. Uh, ono što sam otkrio u našoj regiji da su žene uh, bile prve mirotvorke. And I found that women were the first peacemakers. Uh, 
One su prve prelazile granice. They were the first to cross borders. One su prve pomagale onima iz druge zajednice. They were the first to actually lend a hand and help people from other ethnic and religious communities. Dakle, bile su daleko hrabrije od muškarca. They were much braver than the men. I danas su puno otvorenije za pozitivne procese. And today they're much more open for positive processes. Dakle, to je taj pozitivni kapital žena samo kao jedan primjer koji bi društvo moglo koristiti. So this for, is an example of the positive capital that women offer that the society could make better use of. Uh, naš problem kao društva je to što mi taj kapital ne koristimo do kraja. Our problem as a society is that we're not using that capital enough. We're not really fully using it. Vjerske zajednice ne daju vodeća mjesta takvim ženama. The religious communities don't give leadership positions to women like that. U svijetu politike one su na rubu ili ih uopće nema. In the world of politics they're on the periphery or they're not even visible at all. In, within, among politicians. One, one rade tiho i pomiču stvari. They work quietly and they move things ahead. Ali ja mislim da je došlo vrijeme uh, da one postanu model za cijelo društvo. But I feel the time has come for them to become a model for the whole society. Yes, yeah. Ja sam student četvrte godine i pišem svoj izradnju o poziciji na islamu u Bosniji. Dakle, puno ste kritizirali crkvu, a da li se odnosi isto to na islamsku zajednicu i što možete govoriti o tome, da li ono što je negativitet u islamskoj zajednici dolazi od SDA ili od drugih izvora ili od same islamske zajednice? Ja sam u fokusu za katoličku crkvu jer sam katolik. I'm a, I'm a Catholic, so I gave my focus to the Catholic Church. Ali u biti, od isti bolesti pate sve zajednice. But basically, all the different faith communities suffer from the same illnesses. I svi trebaju učiniti iste obrate, isto obraćenje. And they all need to sort of turn around in the same way and do things differently. Možda jedna zanimljivost. An interesting one. U područjima gdje je jedna zajednica većina, ona ne želi dijalog. Where one of the communities is in the majority, it's not interested in dialog. A tamo gdje je jedna zajednica u manjini otvorena je za dijalog i milatvorstvo. And where a religious community is in the majority there, it's open to peacemaking and dialog and discussion. I to svjedoči koliko naše religijske zajednice vodi logika politike i preživljavanja, a ne ono istinski religijus. And this is evidence of the fact that our religious communities are guided by the politics of survival and not by genuine, sincere religious conviction. I možda da napomenem još jednu stvar. And one more point. Život, suživot islama i kršćanstva u Bosni je jedan veliki kapital za cijelu Europu, pa i svijet. Nažalost, mi tu svoju mudrost ne možemo proslijediti jer ne možemo prevazići probleme o kojima sam govorio. But we can't pass on the wisdom that we've accumulated in this process because we can't step in the kinds of problems that I was talking about in the talk. Europe is filled with fear about Islam and refugees. Many Christians from Bosnia, such as myself, mogu posvjedočiti da živjeti s muslimanima nije prijetnja can simply provide testimony that living in a coexistence with Muslims is not a threat. 
da je to bogatilo mene i kao čovjeka i kao kršćan. Da mogu moliti iz Kurana lijepa mjesta, sufijske molite u toj vlasti. I can pray prayers from the Quran, sufijek prayers and take them on as my own. Bilo bi dobro da mnogi kršćani u Europi čuju danas takva sjedočanstva. A ne samo o ratu. S druge strane, muslimani u Bosni žive u sekularnom državu. On the other hand, Muslims in Bosnia are living in a secular state. Više stotina godina. For have been having the use of separatists for many hundreds of several hundred of years. I otkrili su da sekularna država nije prijetnja za Islam. And the Muslims living in a secular state in Bosnia discovered that living in a secular state is not a threat to Islam. Nego da sekularno područje demokracija omogućuju da se dublje realizira Islam u društvu. That it's possible to even develop a more profound realization of Islamic creed in a secular society. Bilo bi dobro da ta svjedočanstva čuju izbjedice muslimani koji dolaze u Europu. That would be useful for the refugees who are Muslims coming into Europe also for them to understand not to be threatened by living in a secular society. Dakle, u mojoj regiji nisu samo problemi, mada smo o njima govorili. So in my region we don't have just problems even though we've been talking about the problems. Neko jednu vrstu mudrosti koja treba i svijetu i Europi. But we also have a kind of wisdom that is of use to Europe and the world. A i mi sami se moramo iznova izboriti za nje. And we ourselves have to fight for it. That note. I think that I think it might be a very good time to continue our discussion at the reception that we have outside. Um, and, and, and before we do that, to thank both the uh, police teacher for his very interesting lecture and the help that Alpha and Alpha provided as well. <laughs>